Today, the halls of the Ultra Trace Detection Lab are quiet. The facility at Pacific Northwest National Laboratory houses some of the world's best nuclear chemists busy at work. Their mission? To help make nuclear energy safer and keep nuclear weapons out of the wrong hands. One such expert has studied radiochemistry since the dawn of the atomic age. His name is Nate Ballou. His story begins on a day that changed the course of history for the world. Nate was a 22-year-old chemistry graduate student. It was 1942. A date which will live in infamy. On December 7th, Pearl Harbor happened so ordinarily I would have been drafted. Instead, Nate was recruited for a top secret wartime job. What at that time was called the Manhattan Project. Nate's research contributed to the discovery of many unknown radioisotopes. He learned from some of the world's greatest scientists, witnessed historical moments, and received significant honors for his contributions to addressing radiological problems. I was very impressionable because the, the whole area of radiochemistry was, was new. I had lots, lots to learn. For Nate, this was just the beginning of a lifetime in science. After the war, Nate spent two decades furthering the study of nuclear fallout and other radioactive materials for the Navy. In 1969, Nate began the second chapter of his career at Pacific Northwest National Laboratory. There, he advanced radiochemistry, mass spectrometry, and new analytical techniques to address many national security challenges. And along the way, he inspired the next generation of nuclear chemists. I came out here in 1990. So the first time I had met Nate, I was up in the 300 area in the badging office. And here comes this Sprite 70-year-old guy booking across the parking lot in a bicycle um, just to come over to introduce himself to me. So I first met Nate in uh, 1994 when I first came to the lab. This would have been like December 1986. Um, started the laboratory in 2003 and I started as a postdoc. So Nate was my uh, mentor when I started. He must have been in his early to mid 80s at the time, but I wouldn't have known it, you know. By the time I got here, he's basically a, a you know research scientist, coming up with ideas, responding to calls, writing proposals, mentoring you know uh, uh, students, and and I think that's been his contribution is to you know just be the kind of uh, nose to the grindstone scientist uh, trying to solve the problems for national security. Probably the biggest uh, contribution that I participated in with him was we were able to demonstrate. Uh, that we were able to separate particles based on their chemical nature rather than on their size or density. So that was a substantial contribution to that field. He was definitely involved with technology development to do better radiochemistry measurements. Uh, a lot of the work that he did was analyzing or involved with the analysis of, of small particles as opposed to, uh, you know, like a collection of dirt or, a, you know, a piece of material or something. A lot of our research and the research I did with Nate focused on building a better mass spectrometer, making it more efficient, trying to squeeze every little ion out of a, out of a sample and uh, make sure that we count every single atom. He just keeps at it. I mean, this is his, this is his life. He, this is what he loves to do. Nate, from a career standpoint would be, you know, like genealogically speaking, the great-grandfather maybe of a lot of the people that are working here now, so that he was able to um, steer a lot of people on a better um, research path at times through his chemistry knowledge. 
Uh, so he's mentored lots of postdocs, lots of junior staff over the years. So, so, so there's that direct scientific training. I mean, I would consider myself a radio chemist today, but it wasn't by education, it was by training. And so Nate was that radio chemist who um, really introduced me to the field of radio chemistry. I said, you know, you really ought to go talk to this guy, Nate Ballou, you know, and because he really knows stuff. Uh, you know, he was around, you know, when they were, you know, doing things that we no longer do now. Uh, he worked with, uh, you know, analyzing uh, debris from uh, nuclear tests. And uh, uh, there is a, a group here that is learning how to do that now. And it's kind of hard when there are no nuclear tests out there to, uh, you know, that we can go to, uh, to, you know, gain that sort of experience. I wouldn't be where I'm at today without, without him. You know, when someone says, you're a gentleman and a scholar, that's who I think of. Nate embodies that more than really anyone else I've ever met. His experiences, you can tell from the house and the stories he tells at home, are just as rich outside of work as they are at work. He had a victory garden that was unlike any I've ever seen in this area. You would walk into his backyard and it would transport you to somewhere other than this dusty desert that we're in here in Richland. It was just amazing. Um, how he did that and maintained it at his age, I have no idea. It was amazing. Nate's done a lot of work behind the scenes to, you know, that improve the security of our nation. So he's one of the, I would say, un unsung heroes in, 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 this, in, this, in this nation. Nate retired in 2012 and became a scientist emeritus of the laboratory. His legacy of inspiration continues on.